So now in this video we're going to look at a window comparator circuit using a couple op amps. These are the LM358, there's two of them in the integrated circuit right there. And this works pretty good with a single supply. We're just using uh, 5 volts there. So positive 5 volts, negative is ground. And uh, we will know the output is low when the LED turns on. Because you can see we got the positive side of the power supply over there. And it's off right now because the output's high. Now, the uh, high state is the window. There's two sides to the window. We go above two thirds of the supply voltage, the output goes low, the LED turns on. We come down. Now we go to the other side of the window. We go below one third of the supply voltage. Again, the output goes low. So now I turn the power off and uh, took apart the circuit a bit. Right now we still have the outputs wired up. So as I said before, blue LED lights up when one or the other op amps go low. So here you can see the current path. We got the positive five supply there to the anode of the LED cathode there. And then it could either go this way if the output is low right there, or it could go this way if the output is low because of the diodes right there. So the reason why we have the diodes, if this is a high output as close to five volts as it can get, the other op amp there, if it's low, we'd have a direct current path like that. But the diode stop that. If that's more positive, current can't flow. If that one's more positive, current can't flow. The only way it can flow if one or the other is negative, or if they're both negative, too. So here you can see the uh, LM358, I wrote out the pin layout right there. We have to power it, positive supply on top. And then the negative supply is down at the bottom, pin four of that one, we got pinning. So there's one op amp there one op amp there, the top of the op amp is the output on uh, both sides. So you can see we got the diode there. So there's a gray band to the output on both sides right there. I know you can't see the gray band there, but uh, at uh, both outputs, we got the gray band, the cathode, and the anode is above. To the short lead, the cathode of the LED, long lead, the anode, headed to the positive power supply. Now we are going to add our trim pot. So I have a 10 kilo ohm trim pot, exact value, doesn't that matter. Higher, uh, for the most part, the better to waste less electricity. But in uh, any case, here you can see that we have the inverting input above the non-inverting input. Whereas on the schematic, we have the non-inverting input above the inverting input right there. That's just because that's the easier way to draw the schematic. So I always pay close attention to that. So. We're gonna squid across right here. And so I wanted the uh, number two op amp over there to be the uh, top one on the schematic right there. And then the number one op amp to be the bottom one. So we gotta keep that in mind there too. We're going to the inverting input. Remember that is the higher up one. And then on the other op amp there, we're going to the non-inverting input, which is the lower one. So we're dropping down to the uh, lowest input there. And we have our trim pot at that point as well. We have to connect them together so that both of those pins are looking at the same voltage. And you can see the uh, trim pot positive supply on one side, negative supply on the other, and then the wiper going across will give us a fraction of the voltage to those two pins. Now we're gonna wire up the other voltage uh, divider. So we got the uh, second op amp there, the uh, non-inverting input right there, one kilo ohm resistor going to the positive supply. So again, it's the lower pin right there for the individual op amps. Then we're gonna connect from the non-inverting input of the number two to the inverting input of the number one over there. So we'll uh, slide this across right there. So it's the higher one, that's the lower input. There's the higher one, that is the inverting input for uh, that op amp. I'll move it there so we're not blocking the pin of that one as much. Actually, it didn't really help much. But in uh, any case, there we go. We got the connection. And then the inverting input of the number one op amp goes uh, to ground. So we're going to use this resistor right there. So we have one third of the resistance there, two thirds of over there, as far as that pin is concerned. So two thirds of the supply voltage. And here we're closer to ground right there. One third is lower than uh, two thirds of the supply voltage there. So we got one third of the total voltage there. It's a lower voltage, it's closer to ground. That one's a higher voltage because it's closer to the positive supply. So now let's look at how this circuit does what it does. 
And again, we need a low output to one or the other op amp before we'll have a low output and the LED will turn on. This op amp here, the second one, the one on the right that we wired up, our uh, set voltage is two thirds supply voltage set to the non inverting input right there. So as long as this voltage is higher, the output will be high. We have to raise the trim pot above two thirds of the way right there to get a higher voltage, which will give a lower voltage at the non inverting input and a low output right there. So that's why we have that top one third range where one of the op amps will go low. Now we have the opposite condition here. Our set voltage is at the inverting input and it's a low voltage, one third of the supply voltage. Again, as long as this one's higher, which is one third or above, then the output will be high. We have to drop below one third of the supply voltage to get a lower voltage than we, we have at the inverting input. Once the non-inverting input is lower than the inverting input, that's when the output goes low. And so that's really about it. The power supply is off, which you should do while you're building circuits. The LED is off because we still have the uh, window there where the output's high, we go low, and uh, or we go high enough, then the LED will turn on. The output will go low. So we got this kit here, that's where I got the LM358 I used in the circuit. It has the pin layout on there. You can see it shares a little bin with the NE555. We also got the names on there. So I got them memorized. I didn't have this one memorized. And uh, so I looked at this kit to, uh, to help a lot. So in any case, there's a lot of nice kits there with a lot of integrated circuits. You can learn about the uh, integrated circuits that you already have if you buy a kit with a bunch of them and they don't cost all that much. So I thought I would add that since this is a fairly simple video. But in uh, any case, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting into the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.